you know, when these banks start flipping on the system and using it and they're not using the other system, tons of money is coming rushing in like, like, you know, the dam gates opening, you know, like a dam, like a water dam, not yeah. like a dam gates. <laughs> well, again, back to the whole thing from the Swiss side, you mentioned like flows, you know, hmm. I think of a dam bursting that's, you know, liquidity flow, I guess you could say, I know it's a weird analogy. Um, Here's another thing from Swift wire transfers. Look at this for a second, guys. I'll blow this up a little bit more for you. Make it a little bit bigger for you to see it. What's this say? Swift was founded in Brussels in May 1973. They use this old technology with initiative being supported by 239 banks in 15 countries. The main goal was to create a standards data for financial transactions. When we talk about standards like ISO 222 standards, or how about Gilbert Verdi and ISO TC 307, he created that standard quant network standard um but yeah for financial transactions using a shared processing system global communication network four years after its foundation this first swift message was sent in 1977 okay swift message to communicate with the banks what about iso 222 messaging a lot more faster more efficient if anything more safer not as garbled you don't have truncation um, since then, SWIFT has become the primary global system for international fund transfers. In 2020 alone, over 11,000 SWIFT members from 200-plus countries sent 35 million transactions daily through the network. Look at this stat, guys. The organization recorded an average 41.8 million messages per day on year-to-date basis as of July 2021. Estimated value, this is why we reference it, $5 trillion per day in funds movement. Now, when we get into this next part, this is what, where um, Will Fix was mentioned, Brad Garlinghouse. So, Will, we'll take a pause and just play this because you're talking about it. But it talks about, boom, $10 trillion to flow, just like it mentioned from Swift, flow into the XRP ledger from digital or custody digital asset market. It says XRP is designed for 10000 plus. Where is this reference? Is it reference from Brad Garlinghouse? Well, see it for yourself. Let's go ahead and play this. Here we go. The, the macro environment around custody digital assets uh, is expected to be close to $10 trillion by the year 2030. And it, inevitably, uh, people are going to need a place to store those assets and uh, safe, secure, and they need to be able to transfer them as well, having good on and off ramps, uh, even the, the t a tokenization engine, some of the work Ripple is doing around central bank digital currencies or CBDCs. So we think the, there's a lot of pieces that uh, come together and we already had, and I remember when you and I first spoke, uh, you know, I remember being on a, a call was at one of the largest top 10 banks in the world and a, a, com a bank Ripple was already working with and they were asking us about, could we help them with their custody? This is prior to the medical acquisition and we weren't in a position to do that. And so when we think about that synergy, the ability to say to that existing Ripple customer, hey, you know, here's a, a best in class, you know, going head to head, you time, time again, and winning uh, on the custody uh, level, you know, to be able to bring that product to them, I think is a great opportunity for the, the two companies together. But, but yeah, I mean, he's talking about all of the money. I mean, to, you know, there's, that's nothing to spit at, is it? Um, well, it's not even all the money. I mean, you know, some people want us to be conservative and I get that. I, I welcome it. You know, even if we do get conservative and we just do percentages of all the money, that's worth a hell of a lot of money. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's a ton of money. And I, I think the, you know, we've we've heard so many predictions. Here, here's the thing I was thinking about earlier. With Bitcoin, there was nobody really anticipating what it was going to do. It just happened. Then people in hindsight are looking and going, yeah, man, look at all the millionaires that were made. Then you see everybody popping up on YouTube to having the Lambos, all the stuff. Crypto takes off. Then people, then you know, it starts branching off into multiple different coins. Then you get into your meme coins. And then some people made big money with non-utility, just meme coins. And, um, and people were sort of anticipating that. Then a craze began where the new coin, everybody wanted some of the new coin. The bigger the fraction, the better, because then it goes to a penny and we can perceive that. So we think oh, there's better value there. Um, 
So people started buying and anticipating. So now we're sitting here with utility coin and it's like a bellyache of anticipation. It's like everybody's talking about when it's going to be, when it's going to be. And it's like the carrot, you know, on a, you know, you see a cartoon, a stick and a carrot, you know, and so the, the horse or, or whatever is walking forward, trying to get it. And the whole time it's just in front of its nose. And that, that's what it feels like. It, it really feels like that. And it's hard for us to perceive the reality. So we sit with a hope that has an if in it, the word if. We have a hope like it might not happen. I have a hope like it's going to happen. That's the that's the that's actually the biblical form of hope in, in the Bible when it talks about hope. It's not talking about maybe, you know, the hope of heaven, like maybe you'll go, maybe it's there. It's not that kind of hope. It's kind of the point of our shows, Max, is to help establish uh, hope through learning. You know, if you see that all this money is coming in and you own some XRP, let yourself be happy. You know, that, there's shows we can go to where the guy's at green, you know, and he's just down on everything. He's up on some things and pats himself on the back. He's the only content creator on earth that's saying everything that's right. And all his conspiracies are true. And, you know, and, and ours may not be our projections may not be true, but um, what you're going to get here is community and you're going to get hope and you're going to get information. You're going to get a mix of, of uh, the Vulcan over this way that is super intelligent. And then you're going to, you know, get me like the court gesture or something that's going to no. figure out smart ways to say something or, or, or ways to speak to, to give, um, I don't know, insight in a creative way. Um, and that's what we're trying to offer you guys. So I, I hope you guys like that, but, but, but man, the, the money's coming. Your coins going to, it's already gone up. It's going to continue to go up. You know, there might be sell offs along the way, but, uh, the institutional money is coming in. And ISO has a deadline because I, I noticed when you were reading that, Max, it said, um, you know, they can start now. So the November, this November, you know, they pushed the date back to April, didn't they? Well, what they did is gave an extension because some of them weren't ready. Some of them are going live in November. They're not right. going to wait. They're not made to wait. They're given opportunity they're giving, they're giving more opportunity, longer opportunity to the ones that aren't ready. Oh, by the way, let me tell you what, uh, XRP, XRP has an API feature. That's basically plugging into the back of a computer. So XRP offers API where they just literally plug in and it's done. Think of that. Now, what do you think? I would think, you know, as a salesperson or as a person wanting to land contracts, if these people were having trouble, I'd be like, hey, um, I know you're working with so-and-so, but you don't have to do it that way. We can just plug you into XRP's back door. It'll be API and you're ready now. Did you know that? I think it was Brad Gardinghouse said they can do a CBDC for a country, whole country, in one day. That's a flip of the switch for a whole country. One day. But I'm saying that's a flip of a switch for an entire country in one day, and that's insane. What I'm saying is, too, what I'm adding is this component is XRP is already ready to go. So the banks can be made ready to go. Um, so all this waiting, you know, I, I don't know. Maybe maybe they're having to wait to unplug from the other things. You know, that's got to be a feat, too, if you think about it. 
I mean, I get where everybody's coming from. Like, you know, some people are saying, hey, Max, it's, it's November. I just, I also look at it from the point of view, like, okay, look what happened back in March 20th. Yeah, you know, it was just like that ISO 222 went live. That's just something that went live. It wasn't like full skill implementation. You know what I mean? It's like, so if anything, it wasn't Ripple XRP or Stellar XLM that moved in value during that day. It was XDC. And so my thing is, Right. You got to have utility in motion to get to these price levels. Like when I say utility in motion, I mean just that the use case of the particular digital asset working at like full implementation, full scale, all this stuff, because that creates that much more that supply and demand for the particular asset. Do you want to accumulate it when it all takes off? Well, of course not. Right. That's why we buy at some of these low prices and so on. But when we talk about flip of the switch or all at once or like you said a dam breaking and all that stuff um you know it, it excites me a little bit you know in regards to this coming november like i guess you could say like the, a, a big dam and part of it you know some of that water is coming out forget that man you know we need like um somebody who's like you know superman level coming in and destroying the whole dam and just big giant you know like the whole river coming through the, the dam can't hold it and it's just all that you know odl on demand liquidity is pouring out of it like nothing can stop it you know not just little tiny parts you know back to my you know uh olympic size swimming pool analogy you know we talk about odl on demand liquidity i know it's called you know ripple payments i get it i'm still always going to call odl it's like am i going to get excited about it's a hot summer day and you know, we're gonna go out to the the pool and um, the 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 shallow end. My 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 feet only has a little bit of water touching it, or I'm more excited about like I'm up to my neck in all this water, or I'm in the deep end and then I'm covered in all this water because the whole pool is filled. You know, pools of liquidity, not oh we're using a little bit of it. We're gonna start it. Okay, that might be the start of a bull run. That's definitely not all time highs. And for me personally. It's all about all-time highs. I'm just being real.